Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? All right. So today I just kind of want to talk about the VIX a little bit and uh, show you exactly how I use it uh, whenever I'm trading. Just kind of give you a few tips. Uh, somebody had to ask me to do a video on the VIX and how to use it, how to utilize it basically and what to look for. Um, so we're going to get down to it, right? I'm just going to show you this one. And of course, floor slash ES, um, you know, so you guys can see exactly what, um, what I'm talking about here. So what is the VIX? Uh, that I, that is the main question. So if you guys see up here, mark, market volatility index, okay? Um, a lot of it is based on volatility. Volatility comes from like number one, uh, catalyst, right? Um, so it can be any anything that has to do with news, anything that has to do with war, like when that Ukraine thing happened, this this is what happened. I think was it? Uh, uh, oh yeah, nice little fear gauge happened here. I think that one, or I don't know how long has the war been going on. Um, but anyways, it, it's it's those pops of catalysts that drives the market. Okay, and when that happens, it's you see a lot of aggressive volatility, right? So if you grab, this is when the war happened. Okay, so yeah, basically 2022. Okay, um, and then this this happened here. Okay, so this one. All right, so I just want to say page, right? Not these. Uh, I'll point these out in a bit. Um, so anyways, by the year 22, so this whole year we've been at war, okay? So basically the whole Ukraine and China thing. I mean, uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, that's kind of what happened, right? So the VIX is based on volatility. It moves on volatility. It moves on the fear in the market. The fear of thinking that things are going to crash. Basically, everything is bearish. Everything is downtrending. You know, there's there's fears in the market based on the catalyst that that is happening at that time. Now, this one here, I want to point out this bad boy right here, okay? Look at this one. All right, so let's go check back that one. So this is 2019. Where do you guys think that 2019 was? Um, right here, is it the COVID one? Let me let me see that one real quick again. Oh, yeah. So this is twenty twenty one twenty two. This is nineteen. Nope, two thousand twenty. Uh two thousand twenty. So two thousand twenty was when COVID happened. All right. So let's go point this bad boy out. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm doing this video just with no notes or anything. All right. So here you go. This is the move for the VIX uh, when when ES basically broke down and COVID happened. This is exactly what happened, right? There was a lot of fear in the market in general, as you can see here from this twenty from this pop right here, it was 2020. Uh, that ended up popping off, right? So, uh, yes, 2020. Yeah, that was a COVID drop. I don't know why it's... Um, I don't know why it looks like this. All right, but anyways, that's kind of weird. Uh, what I want you guys to see is the point of, you know, this bad boy right here, you know, driving down and the VIX moving on up. It's important to know that because the amount of fear that was within the market was pretty, pretty heavy. Like this thing went from 22 all the way to 85, right? Where in the past have you seen the VIX do that? It, you really haven't seen much of that. And every time we did drive up, right? I want to point these out. Uh, a lot of it was news related and it only lasted for, for such a short period of time. All right? Mind you, these are weekly candles, right? So that's what we got to pay attention to. And the fear only lasted for so long. So a lot of the times when you hear people say, oh, that's the, um, uh, it's priced in. It's priced in because of the reaction of the catalyst was already done. Usually that happens pre-market in some instances where we have earnings or where we have a news overnight. It usually pops up uh, just a stock in general. And it's called priced in because next thing you know, if it drives up, it's dropping back on down to fill like that whole gap pre-market. And then vice versa. Usually when it drops down, it usually, it usually snaps back up because a lot of the reaction is all said and done. And that's where a lot of people get caught up because they're trying to trade the news versus 
the actual break of the levels. That's where things get confused for a lot of traders out there. And it's a lot of it for beginning traders that don't understand why or how. Um, that's why it's clear to identify exactly what you're trading and why you're trading it. Like I said, this case is volatility. It's a volatility index that cannot be charted first and foremost. You cannot go on this and be like, oh, we're hitting the resistance trend. No, no, no. Okay. This is volatility is based on fear in the market. So you can't come on here and say that this little, you know, line right here is going to be your support and you're going to look for calls and you're going to look for the market to reverse. By no means, you should not do that because, all right, let's go to the beginning of the year. Let me show you. Okay. Let's look at last year. Okay. So we're going to start from right here from this uh, 1630 and we're going to drive it all the way to 22. All right. Cause that's kind of like where we closed. So we're, all right, don't mind the stop line. All right. No, we're going to take that off. I'm just showing you these points, all right? That's all I'm doing. I'm not doing no trend line or anything. But I want you to see that the way that the VIX moved all year, okay? If this was something that followed the market, and if this was something that you were able to chart and something that moved in sync with the market, the, the, the chart for forward slash ES should look exactly like this, except the opposite, okay? Let's go check it out. Does it look exactly like the VIX? All right, the answer is no, okay? It has, it does not look anything like this. This one is a nice clear downtrend. Every time we uh, pushed up, we dropped, pushed up, we dropped, and we made a lower low every single time until we found a bottom down here at this like 35.90, okay? And then we close around like this 38, um, 38.70 level by the end of the year. So from 48.08, basically that all-time high, we closed all the way at 38.70 uh, level, right? Now the VIX should be basically around that same level if it was something that followed the market in sync, all right? Now this year should have been like this, okay? The difference here is because it's not moving in sync with the market. That's what you guys need to understand and need to see based on the chart itself. If it were to be something like the market, it would have this, right? Like that, and then close like around here. That's how the market would look like, right? The market and the VIX together moving in sync, all right? So I wanna make that clear so you guys can actually compare those two charts and look at them that they don't match at all, okay? So that's why it's called the volatility index because it cannot be charted. There are moments in the um, throughout the weeks, throughout the months, where we have events like uh, JP or you know some other FOMC member speaks and he says something crazy and it moves the market in a wild, aggressive way intraday. It doesn't mean that we bounced off a support. It doesn't mean that we rejected off a resistance. Okay, it doesn't mean any of that. What that means is that the catalyst intraday reacted towards the market economical events or catalyst, whatever it was. Whether it was positive or, or negative, this is going to move up or down intraday. Whatever level it hits, it's whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, now right now we're down here. Someone's going to say that this is support. Somebody's going to say that this is like the biggest support in the market. So watch out. Like it's okay to make sure you have alerts here and to be aware of the market. But just because we're down here doesn't mean that we're going to go green on the VIX and red in the market. Okay. Remember that you don't have to look at this every single day. All right. Um, take it day by day and literally watch when there's the economical event, how you can tell when, um, the sentiment is bearish aggressively is when your contracts start to move, right? Now here, I'm going to get into some a little more details for you guys, okay? I don't care where we're at. I don't care if we're at 1960 or 1850 or 17.06. It doesn't matter to me. What's going to matter is the way that you're going to identify how it's going to be um, bullish for the VIX and bearish in the market in general based on fear. If you can see these contracts here, um, these are the, the IV percentages right here. And you can see that this one right here is already at 199%. This one is at 86%. This is a weekly contract. 
And mind you that these are going up a little aggressively, these two right here, because we have JP speaking uh, the next two days. I think there's like a testimony thing and then there is uh, an actual speech on Wednesday. So right here with this, you know that the ID is increasing. So somebody is, you know, basically prepping up for that specific um, uh, economical event. Whether it's going to affect it in a negative or positive way, we don't know that. We just know that the, based on the percentage, the higher it goes, the more open interest and volume that there is on those contracts and uh, the more that it's going to move in one direction. Whether it's bearish or whether it's um, bullish, we don't know that yet. We just know that somebody is setting up for a bearish move based on the VIX because this is a volatility index that when it creates fear in the markets or there's fear ahead coming, somebody is going to be prepared to buy the dip down here and make some money off that IV. The IV is when it increases and then it's going to push it on up with the fear in the market. Without the fear in the market, the IV will drop and this thing will just move normally. It won't affect the market in any way, shape or form. Okay, so even if it's red, if it's green, it, the, if the IV is too high and it continues to drop, it will affect your contracts and it won't affect the market, Okay, meaning that the market will stay consistently bullish um, throughout the day or the next few days. So this one, you don't need to look at it every single day. I want you to know that um, there is no level here that is resistance or support on here because it's based on volatility, it's based on fear in general as a whole in the market, okay? Now, the best times to look at this as well, okay? I want to point out um, uh, the uh, structure here in the market, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this just so you guys can see, like, where where you would have uh, started looking at things, right? All right, so for instance, let's go, um, let's just go look at this little trend right here, right? Um, we were trending nice in the market. Uh, and then I think a lot of people had this like, I don't know, there's like a flag here on the daily time frame. As soon as this broke down right here on this day, this was a red flag. Okay. And then we we sold off. All right. So at this point, I'm sorry. At this point, you should have been looking at the VIX now. What was the VIX doing exactly on uh, was last, last Monday? All right. Let's go see. Oh, well, Tuesday, right here. Look at the, the way that this thing ran, okay? So it ran, was that that Monday, yeah? Yeah, all right, Tuesday. We weren't open Monday, we were closed. All right, so Tuesday, so yes, that was right. All right, look at the, the way that uh, this trended. What you wanna do now is compare the VIX and compare you know, the market. All right, so your candles on the VIX should look like this right? Compared to this right here. Why? Because this thing dropped, it consolidated, and it kept dropping. Okay, I want you guys to point this out. Look, so the VIX from this day, it should have been all the way down here. Did it or did it not follow the same pattern? No, it did not. Since then, since, it, since that Tuesday, the VIX just kept on dropping and dropping and dropping. This is why I tell you that the VIX is just based on volatility and there was no volatility this prior week. All that happened here was a nice little trend to the downside. Um, the pattern broke, so the structure broke and there was no fear in the market, okay? Just remember that there was no fear in the market, just a nice steady downtrend. That's the difference here. So a lot of people come and look and say, well, why are we so bullish here? Well, we're bullish because there was never no fear. And the structure broke to the downside. We reached the bottom again for a nice healthy pullback um, for the upside, right? Um, as of right now, of course, I'm not telling you guys, you know, start this, this right all the way to 42, okay? I'm showing you exactly how it's happening now so you understand that I'm not just pointing out, you know, some random charts. I'm giving you guys the, um, the opportunity to actually learn from this and see that it's... Um, um, it, it's moving together, right? And if it's not moving together, then there's a problem. But again, you don't need to look at the VIX every day. Had you looked at the VIX and you saw that the VIX was dropping and dropping, you would have been able to buy the dip on the market with no hesitations, right? Now, right now that we're heading into this 
uh, economical event. Everybody's going to be watching the VIX. Everybody's going to be watching the market and they're going to see if it's going to drop or push up, right? I don't have an answer for you guys, but I want you guys to see how it's going to move in sync on that specific day. Pull up the VIX when, J uh, when JP speaks. Pull up the VIX when the president says something crazy. Um, pull up the VIX when there's a major event, when there's some data, and use that in order to gauge in on the sentiment of the market. That is the only way that you can use the VIX. Any other regular day, don't worry about using it. Okay, Don't use it and, and say, hey, VIX has the support, guys, or VIX, VIX is that resistance, because you can clearly see here that there is never no fear in the market. Okay, um, We can be bearish intraday. We can be bearish on a small pullback, on a little trend for a few days, but it doesn't mean that we're crashing. It doesn't mean that there's actual fear. If the VIX had continued you know, rolling on up and continue, then yes, the market would have been in some great danger. But as you can see here from the VIX and forward slash ES, the market is not in no crazy danger. Okay. So um, I hope that kind of just helps clear, clarify a couple things when it comes to the VIX because somebody had questions on it. I mean, I wish I knew uh, what kind of questions you had, but I hope that that can kind of guide you into the next, um, next few times that you look at it. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how some of you guys are using the VIX, but this is exactly how I use it. This is how I've been using it for the past like five years that I've been trading. Um, I do know number one thing is this thing cannot be charted. Um, fear in itself is not something that you can guess and be like, hey guys, like there's gonna be you know tons of fear here in the market. You know, let's buy the let's buy some puts. You know, for a spy, it doesn't work that way. Had it worked that way, then I think we'd all be rich and we'd be able to identify when the fear is going to come in the markets, but we don't, we can't determine that, right? Nobody knew that there was going to be war, okay? Uh, nobody knew that um, Trump was imposing tariffs on China back a few years ago. Um, nobody knew that there was going to be a major recession, you know, in like 2007 or whatever the year was, right? And now we're facing inflation, but nobody knew how bad it was going to be. But even the VIX tells you <laughs> that it wasn't that bad, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, right? Um, uh, but it is pretty bad still. Uh, but in general, just know guys that a lot of the volatility from um from the uh previous year is a lot of it's all said and done. You know, all that stuff is old news, and now we're just finding like some adjustments in the market, adjustments in stocks, and in general, things are trying to find their value now, whereas where they should be, um, or where investors think that they should be. Um, price that you know how are these companies going to hold through the inflation process and through the economical changes how many are gonna uh, withstand the impact of the revenue and the um, outgoing expenses so it's it's a whole lot you know details to that but just remember guys that the volatility from last year is gone okay this is a new one now this, this is a whole new set where everything's functioning and nothing is moving in sync like it, it like it should be, okay? Everything is trying to find its mo momentum and its movement, and that's what we got to adjust to. Day by day, intraday, um, pick and choose what you're trading. Um, stick to that, and don't go out of your plan. Remember that yesterday's price action is not like today, so our prediction into what may happen in the future can potentially change, and it's our job to catch that moment of change and that's why we trade breakouts, we buy dip buys, we buy patterns. That's when things change, right? If it was bearish and we have a falling wedge, that thing breaks to the upside, it's going to change bullish. It's no longer going to be bearish. Okay, example, um, you know, just to give you guys that clear mindset that remember, it's all about finding that level where something is going to change. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps you guys understand uh, the VIX a little bit more. Um, if you guys still have questions on it, please let me know. Uh, you guys know where to find me. I'm at Conserv Conservative Collectors. Uh, my name is Chef G316. If you guys don't know um, my name on there, that's who I am. And I literally, you know, I trade with the team and post swings for the team and everything. Give you guys a weekly watch list and uh, a lot of knowledge on how to trade or what to look for. All right. So um, you guys enjoy your day. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Um, let me know in the comments below or just tag me in the Instagram or wherever you guys uh, want to share. Cool. Have a good one and I'll see you on the next one.